Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today, I have a really nasty integral for you. I, again, got this integral from the channel Maths505. Um, I'm going to be solving this directly using Feynman integration. Now, <clears throat> I am definitely going to skip some of the really, really nasty busy work steps. Um, I assure you anything that I skip um, can be solved uh, using traditional integration techniques, meaning, you know, substitution, trig sub, partial fraction decomposition, um, integration by parts, things like that. Um, anything that I skip can be solved using one of those methods. Um, so this is going to be more about the, uh, the process of solving this with Feynman integration. Again, you know, Feynman integration probably isn't the way to go. Check out math, Maths uh, 505's video if you want to see a different way of doing this. But anyway, let's just get started. Okay, so this is our integral. The integral from 0 to infinity of the inverse tangent or arc tangent of 2 over 1 plus x squared dx. So our first step, like usual, is to create a function of t that closely resembles our original integral. In this case... I am going to put a 2 uh, right after the, the um, a t right after the 2. Now, notice that um, I did not uh, just replace the, um, the 2 with a t. Um, if you want to see why I did that, go ahead and try to make that reparameterization, and you, you'll you'll understand why I place the 2 after the t. Okay, so um, the next thing we want to do, oops, is note that um, if we evaluate our function of t at the point 0, we'll get 0, because arc tangent of 0 is 0. And if we evaluate it at the point t is equal to 1, we get back our original integral. Okay. So next, we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to take a derivative with respect to t of our f of t. Um, and that can be accomplished by simply taking the partial with respect to t of the integrand and leaving the rest alone. So after you take that derivative, this is what you have. So this, this is our f prime of t. And now we come to the part where I'm that I'm going to skip. I'm not going to show the process of evaluating this integral. It is definitely solvable using uh, traditional techniques. We have an integral. Um, well, it's it's a it's it's a rational integral, meaning um, it's a polynomial over over a polynomial, um, and the um, the term in the top is uh, two degrees less than the biggest term in the bottom. So this is going to converge. Um, anything of the form a, uh, ax squared over bx to the fourth plus cx squared plus d from zero to infinity, it's going to converge. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to be showing how to evaluate this. It is solvable using traditional techniques. What you do is you factor this denominator, then you perform partial fraction decomposition, and then there's a lot of really, really nasty integration uh, to do from there, but it's absolutely doable. Um, but what you get when you evaluate that is that f prime of t is equal to this nasty thing right here. Pi times the square root of the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2 to the 3 halves times t to the negative 1 half. Great. So now we have f prime of t, and you'll notice that this, this f prime of t is very easy to anti-differentiate because this part right here is just a constant. So we know now that f of t is equal to uh, pi times the square root of the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2 to the 3 halves times the antiderivative of t to the negative 1 half dt. All I did was factor out that constant and integrate. Great. 
So now that gives us this. We have f of t is equal to this junk times t to the one half plus c. Now uh, we can get rid of that c or we can solve for c by using this fact that f of zero is equal to zero. So let's evaluate this at the point zero and set it equal to zero. So we have f of zero equaling zero, we know that, which is also equal to zero. This whole thing evaluates to zero if you plug in zero for t plus c. That implies that c is equal to zero. So this is our f of t. Now all we have to do is remember that f of 1 is equal to i. That's our original integral. So we know that f of 1 is equal to i, and that's our answer. If we plug in 1 into that, this, this is what we get. So that integral is equal to pi times the square root of the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. Um, and a lot of you will probably recognize this as the golden ratio, the square root of 5 minus 1 divided by 2. That is the golden ratio. So that integral is equal to pi times the square root of the golden ratio. Kind of neat. Um, anyway, uh, if any of you <laughs> want to go ahead and solve this integral, it's a, it's a good challenge problem. I assure you it can be done. Like I said, this, this can be factored. This can be factored. And then you can perform partial fraction decomposition. And then you can evaluate each one of those integrals uh, separately. Um, but anyway, that is it. That integral is equal to pi times the square root of the golden ratio. I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.